Hey everyone, my name is Jonah and I'm a physiotherapist. And I'm Nicole, and I'm also a physiotherapist. May is National Physiotherapy Month here in Canada, so we wanted to create a video sharing some unique perspectives about the profession that we will share. We asked a group of our friends and colleagues to answer five questions about physiotherapy. We want to thank everyone who took the time to answer these questions, share their voice with us, and make this video a reality. Now, some people weren't able to share a video with us and instead filled out a survey. So, you'll see Nicole throughout the video reading out some of our favorite responses that we got from the surveys. This video is, I think, really special and highlights how unique and wonderful physiotherapy is. So, sit back, relax, and get ready to catch a quick glimpse of why we're both so proud to be physiotherapists. Enjoy! For me, physiotherapy really means getting back to the things you love and the things that you need to make your life complete. Physiotherapy means to me community. I think physiotherapy really to me means um, community. To me, physiotherapy means learning how to overcome injuries, learning how to overcome pain. Physiotherapy to me is about helping people. The community we create with the people that we see every day helping them to move better and get back to the things in life that they want to do. The science and the art of optimizing function, optimizing movement. To me it's a profession that helps people to move, it helps people get better, to get healthier, it empowers them to think more about taking charge of their own health. Help people get through some of the toughest times in their life. It's also the community we create with the people that we work with and our settings are so vast and varied across the country. It's amazing to see the different networks and communities that are created. You can also think about it in a way where community is actually being built around the clinic, around the physical therapist as well, because of the strong bond and alliance that we create with our patients and, you know, among other healthcare professionals. It's helping people realize they can take their health into their own hands and empower them to do this. It means helping someone get back to doing what they love. Physiotherapist is a helper and a pain reliever. Physiotherapy means getting people back to living the life they want to live and using movement to help do that. Physiotherapists are curators of quality of life. Staying healthy, avoiding injuries, so you can perform at your max level. I think physiotherapy to me means giving people back the ability to do the things that they really enjoy. To me, community with our colleagues that started when we were in entry level, learning together from each other, and then continues as we continue to work and learn more and want to and serve our clients better. Physiotherapy is really tackling those things that might get in your way and helping you to get back to the things that you love and the things you need. It is a pretty badass profession and we are very lucky to be able to do what we do. It makes me really proud to be a physio and, and do what I do. Uh, I like this question. That's definitely a tough question. I've got a couple of kids, a uh, two boys, an eight and 11 year old. I wonder what they'd wear. Regular clothes. I think they would likely have to dress up as a superhero. A morph suit that has muscles printed on it. Try and grow a beard and, and you know, bald with a beard like me. I mean, hopefully not a polo shirt and dress pants. Pretty much like a professional golfer, but without the clubs. <laughs> For the tools that we use, we'd need Batman's utility belt. And I think in that utility belt should be a goniometer. Um, goniometer? <laughs> Goniometer for sure, actually, yeah, we'll throw that in there. Maybe they have a goniometer? Uh, I think they would need to have cheerleader pom-poms because sometimes we have to act like a little bit of a cheerleader. So I don't think my closet looks all that different from Tiger Woods right about now. For intelligence, so their brain should probably be extruding from their head, um, just with the amount of knowledge that we have to have. That would probably look different depending on where that physio worked, whether it be a hospital or a clinic. Kathy's in a polo or scrubs. General athletic clothing. Some sort of athletic looking top. Nike freeze. You know, some fresh kicks. Runners. Lululemon. Lululemon leggings. Lululemon pants. Lululemons. I, I would say in 2020, they would wear head to toe Lululemon. Uh, and I think we should have a cape, and in that cape should be the word empathy because we cover ourselves in empathy. 
20 healthcare professionals and 10 of them are physios, <laughs> it might be hard for you to pick out which one's which. Physiotherapists don't really wear um, different clothes. No, uh, I mean, it could be anything, right? Uh, I, there's no one image of what a physio is in my mind anyway. As long as you got a nice, crisp golf shirt. I mean, aside from passing all your licensing exams. You have to definitely have good time management. A good physiotherapist is someone who, who embraces and understands the biopsychosocial framework. A great physio, I think, really needs to understand the two things, right? Two main things. Um, human behavior and psychology as much as the physical nature of the body. You have to be a good teacher as well. They're advocating for the patient. Not everybody is physiotherapy the best strategy. Some people it is more of a medical concern that needs to be managed. And so I think in a little bit, we're acting like a quarterback, uh, referring on when necessary, but also making sure that we're addressing their needs. You can tell right away if someone's a good physiotherapist if they let you do most of the talking. So I think you have to be a good listener. A very important part is being able to be a good listener. A good physio is somebody who listens more than they speak. I think you have to be a good communicator and a really good listener as well. You know, what, what it takes to become a, a really good physiotherapist is being a good listener. Physiotherapists are also really good listeners. I think we have to listen to what our patients are saying and also what they're not saying. You have to love connecting with people and love listening more than anything. A good physiotherapist uh, listens. Uh, they are not projecting their own beliefs, their own goals on the patient. They're listening to what the patient says. They're listening to what their goals and expectations are. Really try and understand what is important to them and that will help you to then build your plan because the more you're able to get to know someone and the more you learn about them, the better you're going to be able to make a treatment plan for them. A good physiotherapist is up to date with the evidence. Uh, you also have to be motivated and willing to always learn new things and be open to different ways of looking at something. Being willing to self-reflect and be critical of your thinking at all times, never assuming you're 100% correct. They take time to continue their learning and continue their growth. Again, kind of think outside the box in certain situations when needed. Um, there's a good deal of emotion wrapped around physical injuries. And I think that physiotherapists, good physiotherapists, are those that uh, have empathy for that. I think someone should see a physiotherapist really anytime they've incurred an injury. So the number one reason that I think that people go see a physio or even think to go see a physio is pain. If you are in pain and you need to um, learn a little more about your body maybe on how to heal yourself and then how to prevent that injury or perhaps other injuries from happening again. If you have any pelvic pain, leakage, or if you're planning or have had a child in the past, and when I say pain, I don't just mean from the sport or from running or activity related, but this pain can stem from so many different causes. If someone is experiencing any pain or discomfort in any part of their body with movements or with sports, then I think that they should definitely see a physio or some sort of healthcare practitioner to sort out where that pain or dysfunction might be coming from. I think the easiest answer on when to see a physiotherapist is when something hurts. But realistically, I think the time to see a physiotherapist is when you're intentionally avoiding exercises or routines because you know you'll be more sore afterwards. Listen, I think someone should see a physiotherapist if they have any ache or pain, uh, or you're thinking of starting a an exercise program or a movement-based program. But we always say that you don't have to wait for pain to be there in order to treat something, in order to come see a physio. Whenever they have a physical goal they'd like to achieve. To help you to reach your physical goals, whatever they may be. If some kind of injury has stopped you from doing the things you love. It could be to hold your baby without having any back pain. It can be to squat 300 pounds. It could be to walk your dog for more than 10 minutes or if something is stopping you from living your daily life to the best that you can. A physio can help you do all of those things. I think any time is a good time to see a physiotherapist.
I think uh, what's well, sitting at home right now uh, during the COVID pandemic, I think definitely the teller rehab and the rise of teller rehab and what that will look like after. I mean, throughout this pandemic, I think, you know, it's very easy to focus on the negatives, but I think one big positive um, is the use of virtual therapy. I think that I would really like to see virtual therapy become um, a component of my practice. With this coronavirus um, pandemic coming in, it's really pushed a lot of uh, physiotherapists and, and clinics to actually take that next step and to look to technology to help improve their practice and actually service the individuals that we can't service in person. Virtual rehab. We've only hit the tip of the iceberg and I'm excited to see therapists connecting with their patients in new and exciting ways. I would love to keep in touch with all of my patients and athletes um, when they're gone, they've gone home for the summer um, because I work at the university. The way tech in general is going to influence our profession, I mean it's already being seen throughout the world but even for us uh, I think we're not immune to, to technology and how it changes the way we practice. Uh, as physiotherapists we've got an opportunity, huge opportunity, uh, given our training and experience to consult uh, with corporations or government organizations or NGOs on multiple different levels. In organized sports and team sports, there are several controlled acts that have been added to our physiotherapy designation that allow us to do certain techniques or treat certain areas of the body that uh, before physios were not able to do. Uh, so pelvic floor physio is one of them. The world of pelvic health. Doing acupuncture is another one, so I'm excited to see in the future as our profession continues to grow, what other activities continue to get added to that list. Uh, people are really trying to stay on track with their mental and their physical health on a daily basis, and physios can be a very good part of that. So I think if we do a good job advocating for that and helping the community to learn about what we do and how we do it, I think that's going to be huge. Wow, we hope you enjoyed this video as much as we did. And once again, we want to extend a huge thank you to everyone who took the time to be a part of this video. Now, in closing, Nicole, what ideas or messages really stood out to you besides Lululemon being the official clothing of physiotherapists in 2020? Well, I can't say that our apartment doesn't look like a Lululemon warehouse on some laundry days. But I think what stood out most to me is something that Melanie said early on in the video, which is about how proud I am to be a physiotherapist. Watching this video makes me so proud of the community that I'm a part of and the profession that I represent. I also think I missed out on a solid opportunity to dress up as a physiotherapist for Halloween mm -hmm. while I was too busy dressing up as a Dalmatian for multiple years in a row. What about you? I think what really stood out to me was how different the responses were to what physiotherapy is, but how there was such a strong trend of similar responses as to what makes a good physiotherapist. And if you recall, this was the idea of being a good listener and the importance of listening. I think this is really powerful because it shows that while there may be a lot of different ideas on what physiotherapy is held by different people, our profession places a unified focus on our patients, the way that we listen to them and are there for them. And I think that's such an important message. And now we want to extend the questions to you. What answers or ideas stood out to you? Would you have answered any of the questions differently? Let us know in the comments section down below or include your thoughts on social media when you share this video and help us spread this message. Thank you everyone for your time. We truly appreciate you watching this video. I think there's only one thing left to say, so take it away, Kyle. Thanks and happy Physiother National Physiotherapy Month.